everybody, Annie Edgerton, the Wine Minx here with you for today's episode of Day Drinking with the Wine Minx. I'm super duper excited to have Matt Levy here from the Covert Cocktail Club. He's gonna be joining me and we're making gin fizzes. I don't have, I have all of my accoutrements. So here he is, hi Matt. Hey Annie, what's going on? I'm so excited to drink a gin fizz, I can't even tell you. <laughs> I'm excited to drink a gin fizz too. Always excited to teach people how to make fancy drinks out of common household ingredients. You are the proprietor and host of the Covert Cocktail Club based out of your townhouse in Brooklyn. Where I am not currently. This is my beautiful backyard view currently. Wow. I got a river, uh, I got a cabin. I am upstate. We are sheltering in place out of the city for the time being. Um, but when I'm in Brooklyn, I uh, like to invite strangers into my house and serve them cocktails. It's open to the public, but re by reservation only. And there's a set menu of assorted cocktails and everyone has a drink and it's delicious. It is so fabulous. I have been a couple times. I yeah. really, really enjoy it because it's such a New York thing to me to be able to get together with a bunch of strangers and have a really fun time. So a gin fizz is gin plus lemon plus sweetener plus fizz, mm -hmm. fizz being bubbles, right? You could use champagne, you could use grapefruit soda, or you could use club soda, or you could use seltzer. It belongs to a family of cocktails called the sours. Uh, sours being, uh, we're all familiar with the daiquiri, obviously, and the margarita, of course. Gin sour, it's simple, it's delicious. Always remember this simple ratio, uh, two to one to three quarters. Two, one, three quarter, okay? Two ounces of booze, one ounce of sour, and three quarter ounces of sweet. It's lovely and beautiful up here, but it's uh, the internet connection is not always the best. Cabin rustic, it's okay. You can see what's going on here. I can totally see what's going on, and I love the cabin rustic. It's charm full, full of so, charm. Here's my little cocktail setup ensemble. Love it. I've got my, I've got my shaker. I've got my gin. I've got my egg. Uh, because we're upstate, you can actually see the the pigeon, the chicken poop on the on the egg. Right? I love it. Um, and uh, I got my sour. Sour. And I got my sweetener. Sweetener. I'm right with you. Cool. So we're gonna we're doing this together, right? Excellent. Yes. Fantastic. Two gin. ounces of gin. It's important. Yeah. It's important to fresh squeeze your lemon juice. Uh, each lemon has about an uh, provided it's your typical lemon has about an ounce worth of juice. If you lemon juice, citrus juice just start to go bad within 12 to 24 hours of juicing them. So it's good to fresh squeeze when you're making cocktails for like the ultimate experience. But we want an ounce of that. An ounce that. of it because if you if, keep in mind, it's not called a gin sweet; it's called a gin sour. So that's why you right. want to have slightly more sour than sweet. You you made a rich a rich syrup rather than a simple syrup. Am I right? I uh, on your uh, on your recommendation, so, so no. um, if you don't know, simple syrup is one to one, uh, like a cup of sh of sugar and a cup of water, and a rich syrup is one to one half. Uh, so a cup of sugar to a half a cup of water. Slowly it, because it's thicker, because it's more viscous, it will have a richer mouth feel on the final cocktail. Ooh, uh, love that. The egg white egg white is the interesting part um, because. First off, it makes it very fancy because you can do the fancy kind of egg white drip drip back and forth through the shell so you don't get the yolk in. If you were to put the yolk and the white in, it'd be called a royal fizz. I was considering going to put in a little bit of bitters just to amp up the savory profile of the drink. Um, bitters, they come in different, they're basically like the salt and pepper of cocktails. Right. Uh, common ones are Peychaud and Angostura and orange. I happen to have a bottle of peach citrus bitters. Homemade? Um, homemade by a friend of mine, uh, the former bar beverage director of the Waldorf Astoria, uh, okay. Keacock Alley Bar, you know, fancy guy. Frank well, Haifa, he's a you, wonderful person. You prepped me, so I have some bitters too. Um, I have a dropper, how many drops? Put in a half a dropper's worth. So fill the dropper up halfway and put in half of it. Hmm? Or put in fill it up halfway and put the whole thing in. Right, got it. Now, <laughs> um, Mine are Bro Brooklyn Hemispherical bitters. That, they make a fine product. I don't know where they came they from, make, they're rhubarb. You want to bring a little bit of the savory flavors of the lemon and of the, the juniper and the gin out of the drink. And that's much in the way you salt meat before you cook it on the grill. 
it, it bitters accentuates the cocktail cocktail flavors. Here's where things get exciting. Whenever cocktails are being shaken with an egg white, it's good to do a double shake. Right. All right. The first shake is called a dry shake, which is all the ingredients and no ice. And then you add ice for the wet shake. And by um, by shaking everything without ice, you're basically emulsifying the egg white. And that creates a frothier head in the gin fizz after you pour it. Love it. Great. So it has to be fancy. Ooh, ooh, I feel like we should have music. Doesn't have, be, doesn't have to be that long. Just enough, just enough to emulsify the egg white. Look inside. Mine don't drop it. See that beautiful emulsified egg white? There we go. Ooh! Mine too. Yes, Gorge. You're making, a, you're making a meringue, basically. Definitely has to come at least an inch above the liquids in the shaker. Okay. Also, a good tip now would be to prep your serving glass. So put the ice into your Collins glass, basically a tall soda glass, seltzer glass, water glass like this, fine. But you want to prep it now so that okay. once the cocktail is shaken with ice, you can put it straight into the drink. Cool. Once the drink is shaken in the shaker, um, if you have to take time adding the ice to your serving glass, right. uh, it'll continue to dilute in the shaker. You don't want that. Got it. Baby, just get it in there. <laughs> add the club soda. Because you're working with emulsified egg white, you'll see the foam at the top of the drink rise up to the top of the glass as you add the, as you add the soda. That's right? how you do that, I do. You know, like, like a meringue. Oh my gosh, okay, and very cool. I didn't leave enough room for a little bit more foam, but is it a little too wide? Cheers, Danny. Cheers. I hope you don't get too much. Cheers, cheers everybody. I hope you don't get too much in your mustache. Here we go. Oh my God, it's so good. I thought it was going to be sweeter because of the rich nope. syrup, but it's not. But it's thicker. It's thicker because of the rich syrup. Is that kind of like velvety, rich, smooth, luscious, luxurious mouthfeel. It's so good. This is just lifting my spirits. And we all need some spirit lifting nowadays, let me tell you. Yeah, and this is pretty dangerous because it doesn't taste alky to me. It's not no. very spirit but it, it only It only has two ounces of alcohol. Most typical run-of-the-mill cocktails nowadays have like three to three and a half ounces. You could pound through three or four of these probably before dinner time and only then start feeling the effect. Thank you for teaching me and um, making it not so scary to play with like egg whites and stuff that I wouldn't maybe try at home. Now, and if, if the yolk falls in, oh no, now you've got a royal fizz. If not that big of a deal. If you put in too much simple syrup, next time dial it down. It's all about teaching yourself. I'm a self-taught home mixologist um, and I got to be good at it because I found myself at home being a father of two kids and living where I live in Brooklyn, it's a stretch to any kind of nightlife. And I'm generally thrifty. So I'd rather buy a bottle of booze and teach myself how to make cocktails than go to bars and have their cocktail. What really ramped it up for you? What was the thing that like was the tipping point for you when you're like, I'm doing this full time, I love it. So it was my, my brilliant and beautiful wife's idea to start uh, a speakeasy in our home. And I'm like, uh, okay, honey, whatever you say. It was just another another small step from um, making cocktails for myself, my wife and my friends to making cocktails for strangers and engaging in conversation with them. And then the New York Times happened and then everything. And then the New York Times happened. Yeah. And then, sh and then shit, shit got cray cray. You're now doing virtual. All the participants will have pre-ordered the cocktail uh, that will be delivered to them that uh, chilled that afternoon evening. And then at 9 p.m., everyone that signed up is going to sign online through Zoom, and we're all going to meet each other so, and have drinks together. And, and you'll kind of say, like, this is the menu. We're doing this one together. Right. And then it's going to be at the set. It's like a cocktail tasting, basically. Kind of like replicating the regular cocktail club experience uh, at my house, except in people's own houses. Yeah. I think that's fabulous. So they, nobody has to wear pants if they don't want to. I'm not wearing pants right now. No, I, I, I am. You have quite the collection at your place in Brooklyn. I do. Uh, spirits bottles and from all over the world and people bring you stuff they that do. is imported. What's the most unique, bizarre, like spirit that you've encountered that made you, that made your mind blow? 
fermented maple tree syrup. It's pretty rad. I've gotten oh. some Norwegian schnapps, like Viking Viking bitters. Uh, I've gotten I got a bottle of a Belgian liqueur that is unavailable outside of the city of Antwerp. I love weird stuff too. I always would say like, what what's the weirdest? What's the one that that nobody wants? I want to try. Same. same. That's yeah. what we do when I go when I go to a bar. I say to the bartender like, give them, what's your most left field drink? like out there. Matt, thank you so much for stopping by and day drinking with us today. I really love this gin fizz. I think it's absolutely fabulous and I'm now not intimidated to make it and to play with it and have some more fun playing with cocktails. All the best to you and your family. And as always to everyone watching, please stay safe and well and uh, drink responsibly, which sometimes means during the day. Cheers. <laughs> stay home, stay safe, drink a cocktail. Drink a cocktail. Thanks again, Matt. Bye, everybody. Bye, Annie.